What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a really, really big one. This one's for all you automotive photographer guys out there, and gals, I should say, guys and gals. But this video, I'm gonna be talking about all the things that I've learned over the past five years doing automotive photography full time. Uh, my story is probably a little bit different than most. Unlike a lot of these people, I did it 100% organically. I was at over 10,000 followers. Over two years ago, I've been fortunate enough to travel the country, meeting a lot of cool people, networking, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna put up some of my work. I see a lot of people making automotive photography videos on YouTube that really don't, I don't wanna say don't have their credentials, but haven't really done it, or they're just super big, and then they decide to take pictures of a car and then give their input when they really don't have much experience. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. By no means do I think I'm the best, I'm definitely not but you guys can learn from a lot of my mistakes and you can really grow a lot faster. I promise if you take at least everything I say with a grain of salt and utilize that information, it will expedite the process to get where you wanna be if automotive photography is your passion and you wanna pursue it full time or part time, whatever it may be. So you might see me looking down a lot, got a little, like not spreadsheet, a little sheet here with all the information, but probably one of the biggest regrets I have with automotive photography from the get go was that I always shot for social media. Now, what do I mean by that? So all of you guys are on Instagram. You all know what it is. Instagram, the content's designed to be vertical, four by five or five by four, whatever you wanna call it. So for the first three, almost four years, all the pictures I would take, I would always shoot portrait. Now, that's great if you're only using that content for social media, but if you're using that for a portfolio, a lot of times, or publications, they prefer to do landscape. So I recommend, in most cases, start off by shooting landscape, horizontal, long-wise. Reason being is you can always crop in and make it portrait or vertical, so that way it's optimized for social media. But when you're shooting portrait, you can't really crop and make it landscape because then you're just totally kind of like destroying the composition. And if you don't have a high megapixel camera, you're probably stretching the boundaries and it's gonna start to get a little blurry and pixelated and whatnot. We don't want that. So figure out from the get-go, what are you trying to do? Do you wanna make the content strictly for social media? Is that where it's gonna live forever? Or do you wanna shoot for something like a portfolio to give to clients and have the ability to manipulate it to either do portrait or landscape? Think about it, you, you, know, you make the decision, you're the only one that knows, but there's so many cool photos, especially rolling shots that I took. I took in vertical or portrait that just could be so killer, would be phenomenal for prints, but because I shot a portrait, they're not gonna look as good. So bummer, but hey, you live and you learn. Now, this in my opinion is probably the biggest one for me. And this is a hurdle to even this day still, I don't wanna say haunts me, but it kind of does. Starting out, I always shot stance cars. For those that don't know, I own a team called Eminence. It's like a brand slash car team, family, it's amazing. but it's really based around stance cars. So go figure, what did I start off by shooting and shoot for a majority of my photography career was stance cars. Now there's nothing wrong with that. I love stance cars, they're awesome, great people most of the time, but I'm gonna drop some knowledge on you and this might hurt some of you guys because I have so many friends that only shoot these cars and I promise it probably is detrimental to your future if you're trying to pursue this full time and have a really steady income. We gotta step back here and think, okay, stance cars, what's the demographic of people that build stance cars? Most of the time, 16 to we'll say 24, could be a little bit older, obviously there's some outliers, but for the most part, 16 to 24. Most people 16 to 24 don't have a ton of money because they're trying to build those cars. We've all seen those posts on social media, those stories of, oh, 4,000 on wheels, 5,000 on paint, all this on suspension, blah, 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 blah and then they won't spend $100 on a photo shoot? Well, the reason being is they're spending every penny they make trying to make a car to be flashy for the general public or for social media. They're just gonna use their iPhone. They don't have the, the spare funds because they're putting it all into their car. If you, oh my gosh, my dog, Sheba, quit snoring. <laughs> um, back on track. So that's one of those things where I did that for three years and because it's a generally cheaper audience, and by cheaper, I mean they just don't have the funds or they don't want to spend as much. Now there's always outliers. Again, I got to preface that, that there are some guys that will spend a lot of good money on photo shoots, but most don't. Um, so with that, 
I build a portfolio of a lot of stance cars. I was doing shoots for like 50 bucks, 100 bucks. And to some of you, that might sound a lot, but it's really not in the grand scheme of things. We'll get into that. And I finally was like, you know what? I want to make this, you know, I really want to take this to the next step. I got to start working with like supercar owners, sports car owners. And the reason being is because those guys are a little bit older. They have careers. They have much more expensive cars, which means they have more money. So you guys see where I'm going with this is those cars to them are like children. They have the funds. If they can afford a $100,000 car, you think they care about a $100 photo shoot? No, they would pay two, three, 400 because that's like a child to them. Now, you're probably wondering, well, okay, Evan, you could just, you know, it's transition. It's not that easy, guys. The reason being is my whole portfolio, for the most part, was just stance cars. So when I would network with these guys, which we'll get into that later, that's huge networking, is that I would show them my portfolio and they'd be like, well, these are awesome photos, but it's all these cars that have camber and, you know, hood exits and all this stuff. Why are the wheels tilty? So it kind of throws them off. Even though they like the photos, it's hard for them to imagine their car, their sports car that's mostly stock. So that kind of started to bite me because I'm like, well, I have 50 features of all these stance cars, but I really don't have anything to show you of a mostly stock car because we're so programmed to always go shoot the craziest, wildest vehicle because it's going to do great on social media, which is awesome. Does social media pay you guys? Let that one sink in. Does Instagram pay you when you post? Mm -mm unless you have some sort of crazy sponsorship deal or whatever. And I know you guys are gonna talk about reels, we're gonna get into that. But seriously, like let that one sink in. You gotta set your guys' self up for your future. And there's not, I'm not saying don't shoot stance cars, but really diversify your portfolio. You should have stuff all the way from those crazy stance cars with crazy camber, clapped out sometimes, to really high end, just nice, awesome photos of even stock cars, because then you're attracting all those audience. You appeal to everyone. So don't get yourself stuck in a rut like I am. To this day, I'm still finding out of it, finally getting out of it. But really, like I said, just have one of everything. Even if you have to do a couple free ones just to build that portfolio, do it. It will save you immensely. Number three is network with people you look up to. Now, I see tons of people all the time, and I get this, again, not trying to toot my own horn, but I get messages all the time. Evan, can I have your presets? Evan, can you tell me this? Oh, what camera do you use? What do you do here? Blah, blah, blah. And we're gonna address all that. That's awesome. I'm always up to help other people. So if there's people, let's say you're just getting started and you have some people you look up to, reach out to them, have a conversation, ask them a couple of questions. Now that doesn't mean just bombard them with a ton of questions because odds are they're going to leave you on scene, but start out, you know, kind of tell them a little bit, maybe not about yourself, but like just have a normal conversation of as, as if it's just anyone else and then let that evolve and then you can start asking some of those questions. The reason I recommend doing this is because a lot of the guys, they will help you, but there's also a lot that don't. Not gonna name drop, but when I got started, there was a few guys that I reached out to that were pretty big and they were next to useless. They wouldn't tell you anything, they would keep everything hidden because you know them not telling you what camera they use saves the world. Um, but of course, when we all start out, we always wanna know what gear they use, but it's a whole nother conversation but just network, talk, find some other local photographers, chat with them. If you're just getting started, ask them if you go along for a shoot. Obviously you're not gonna charge the client, you're getting started, it's just free. Just practice, that's what it is, it really is practice. So build a good network of people because that's really gonna elevate you to the next level. If you're the best photographer in your photographer friend group, you're in the wrong group. You should never be the best. You should actually always kind of be on the lower end of things because you wanna learn, you wanna get some stuff out of it. That's why I'm making this video because I'm hoping I can help some of you guys that are maybe just getting started or maybe just been stuck for a few years. Um, maybe this will help elevate you to the next step and I'm always available to chat. I'll have my Instagram here, it's in the bio as well. Just reach out to me, I'm always willing to offer advice for you guys. Number four, this is a big one. I stopped doing this for years and I don't know why, but guys, go to local car shows Go to whether it be Cars and Coffee, if it's just a weekly event held in your town, do that. Go on the Facebook groups, find these places, these pages, groups, whatever it is, find them and go to them. It's free. Also, what I would do now is I'll take my camera and I'll go take a couple, we'll, we'll say 100 pictures, right? I try to take one of every vehicle, at least the vehicles that appeal to me, and I'll just take those pictures, come home, edit them, it doesn't take long at all, and I'll post them and I'll be like, hey, here you guys go. If you enjoy these photos, you know, you know, consider hitting me up for a shoot. And it's amazing how many shoots are generated from that. And most of the time, guys, it's the stock cars because it's usually the older crowd and it goes back into what we talked about earlier. So just because a car stock or maybe it doesn't totally appeal to you, take that picture. 
because that one picture might be worth 150, 200, 250, 300 plus dollars for a photo shoot just for one click. I'm telling you guys, it's crazy. I know. And it's hard because we're all wired all for social media. So if you're taking this with a, like a grain of salt, I promise just watch it back a second time. It's crazy. It will change everything. You will make more money. Like I absolutely guarantee it. Number five, we've all seen people selling presets. Hey, you know, buy my five presets. It's 50 bucks. It's going to change the game. You're going to edit just like me. The reality is no. Now I'm a sucker. I did in the beginning too. We all have probably done it, right? When I first started out and bought someone's presets that had like 50,000 followers. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to produce the same content. My stuff's going to look the same. I'm going to blow up. I'm going to get a ton of money from shoots. Uh, didn't happen. So why I'm saying don't buy presets is because photography is an art. For example, if you see a real painting by Picasso or Van Gogh or whoever, those are worth what, millions and millions? If you printed a copy of that, are those worth anything? A couple bucks, right? Photography is an art, so it's the same thing. Don't use other people's stuff. The reason why is because let's say, we'll, we'll use me for example, I have 10,000 followers, I've built my own style, that's what people say, whatever it is, I mean, I guess I have. But if I sold my presets and JoJo takes my presets, puts them on a similar picture, well, guess what? Odds are JoJo has a very small following, isn't very known, and their photos look the same as mine, they're gonna be like, oh, that looks like top qualities. And then I'm Marty Bigger, so people probably know my name more. You guys get what I'm saying? It's just, it's diluted. Yours isn't worth as much. It's like a replica. It's like a fake wheel. It's like a fake anything. You don't really wanna replicate something. Art is all about being yourself. Photography, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Like you have to see the vision. You have to do it your way. Now, presets can be nice because it can help someone that doesn't know anything kind of practice and learn. But once you kind of get your settings down, you know what you're doing, don't use presets. Take your time, make your own. I have 64 of my own presets that I've saved over the years. And believe it or not, I use most of them on you know shoots here and there. So just make your own, save your money, save that for gear or for a trip or whatever it may be. Don't waste your money on presets because it's detrimental in the long run. Build your own style. Now, this one hurts deeply is the whole Instagram and social media, the whole video rage. Oh, God, it's so disappointing. So I hit over 10,000 followers over two years ago. To me, that was like the end goal. I always wanted to hit 10,000 because then I could share a link on a story. I don't know why, but that just always appealed to me. And I got there, I was super excited. And now in the past year, six months, we've all seen reels. All the social media platforms now cater strictly for the most part, to video content, reels, stories, whatever. Reason being, it has longer engagement, it keeps people on the platform longer, so they're gonna promote that content. For us photographers, it ain't looking too bright for us. You're not really gonna grow much anymore. So you have to really decide, what are you in it for? Are you in it for the clout, the followers, the likes? Do you care about that? Or are you in it to showcase what you can produce? Because we can all make reels, we can all do a little slideshow with some little gimmicky music and get a couple hundred likes and be all excited. Or we could produce content and post it how we took it and what it was meant for and get less likes, but it's really something we enjoy. It's something that we're passionate about and it's exactly what we wanted. You have to make that decision because a lot of people go back and forth and as a little kind of like trial, I've been going back and forth. I've been doing reels lately and the engagement's great. I'm getting followers and getting likes that I haven't gotten in over a year, but it's just, it's not my thing, but I wanted to try it. So figure out what you guys want to do and pursue that, but don't, don't get caught up in the mix because if you try to keep doing both back and forth, you're going to really build a weird audience. It's not going to be good in the long term. Pricing, know your worth. Now, this is a really touchy subject because there's no right or wrong answer here when it comes to pricing because everyone, every region, every area, every whatever you wanna call it, it's all different. There's no right or wrong. Um, my big thing here is don't undervalue yourself. You'll never really overvalue because if you overvalue yourself, you're not gonna get shoots and so you're gonna bring that pricing down. So start high and then realize, okay, have a set number kind of in mind, whether it be monetary value or how many shoots you wanna have. Let's say you want to make $2,000 a month. Okay, let's say you price yourself at $500 a photo shoot, which is very high. Most people really will not get that if you're doing freelance. Um, 
cool. That means you got to get four shoots, right? If you're getting zero a month, one a month, guess what? Your prices are probably too high or you're with the wrong network. So it could be one of those two things. Then, okay, drop it. Let's say drop it to 200, huge price cut. Now you need to do 10 shoots, but guess what? Maybe you get 20 messages. Well, now you just made $4,000 because you cut your prices and you have a larger, more diverse portfolio. You really gotta figure out what works. So try to find that sweet spot, but also be realistic. Don't think just starting out you're gonna make thousands and thousands of dollars because for most people that doesn't happen right away. It takes a long time. And I'm gonna do a whole nother video on where I think you really should network. And if you wanna do stuff freelance or if you wanna work with a company, that's a whole nother subject. We'll get into that at a later video. That's a big one. Now, this is another super duper huge one. I can't express how much this one's affected my personal life more than anything is free shoots, you know, shoots for friends, things of that nature. Um, when we all start out, we have to do stuff for free, right? You have to. So don't be afraid to go do that. Hit up some of your friends and be like, hey, I'm just starting out. You guys down to take some pictures? Cool, absolutely. Most people will never really turn that down because it doesn't cost them a penny. Now, once you start getting bigger, guess what? If you shot someone's car, the same person, let's say two or three times for free, and now magically they hit you up for a shoot, you go and take the picture, and you're like, hey, it's 100 bucks. They're like, well, well, what do you mean? You've always shot my car for free. Well, yeah, that was when I was practicing. It gets real dicey, it gets uncomfortable. And me personally, I've lost several friends because of that, because I got to a point now where I, I don't wanna consider myself successful because I'm not, but like, I know what I'm worth and I'm definitely not doing it for free or for 50 bucks or whatever. So you have to set your boundaries very early on, set the expectation. Hey, I'm just learning, I'm doing this for free. As you know, I progress and get better, I can't do it for free, it'll be for whatever amount I'm charging. So as long as you set that expectation early, you're good. But if you keep doing stuff for free, you're really setting yourself up for A, to have issues with your friends, and B, you're kind of just digging yourself a hole because you're gonna be known as the guy that does everything for free. So even if you're starting out, do it for free a couple times, then charge a small amount and start working your way up, you'll be good that way. Number nine, man, we're cruising, deposits. Holy cow, we've all had that. Hey, love your photos, how much for a photo shoot? Oh, 100 bucks. Oh, awesome, yeah, yeah, I'll let you know. Crickets, dead, you won't hear from them again. You have to take deposits, or how many of you guys have set up a shoot, you picked out a location, time, everything, you're hyped, you get there, oh, uh, I can't make it, sorry. You just spent your time, your gas, everything, it sucks. So take a deposit. Now, this hurts in the beginning because most people don't want to pay a deposit. Most people that aren't serious will not pay a deposit. So even though when you first start doing this, you're gonna be like, well, it's kind of a step backwards because now these people aren't booking shoots with me. Well, the people that were booking shoots with you that won't give you a deposit weren't serious. So save yourself the time and hassle, whether it be 20%, 50%, some people do 100% deposits. I don't understand how that works unless you're like God tier level photographer, but nonetheless, take some sort of deposit so that way you're not stuck high and dry. And also make sure you write that out very clearly so that way it's, whether it be non, make sure it's non-refundable. That's another one. You don't wanna do a, a refundable deposit because then people are just gonna bail on you and be like, oh, just give me my money back. And then you have to pay all the fees and all that stuff, so yeah. Non-refundable deposit, you figure out how much you want it to be, make it make sense, and you're gonna get rid of a lot of those tire kickers, those people that just wanna waste your time and see if you're gonna go do something that you really don't wanna do. Now, gear does not dictate your success. We all started photography at some point. Odds are you probably started with a crop sensor camera, you went on YouTube, you got a couple shoots, you realized, oh my God, there's a thing called a full frame camera. Oh my gosh, I could do more low light photos. Oh my gosh, I get more bokeh. Oh. I gotta go buy that, let me sell my soul. Yes, gear is a tool, but it does not dictate your success. There are so many times that I've tried this, right? I've done this on Instagram. I went and I did a, an iPhone photo and a picture with my camera set up. Now guys, I'll be completely transparent. I have over $10,000 in gear, just between camera bodies and lenses. Yes, does it help? Absolutely, but with one of my setups, we'll say with the camera and lens for one of them, it's about $4,000. I did a side-by-side -side of an iPhone photo and one with that $4,000 camera setup. And I said, which is which? More people guessed wrong than guessed right. So, you know, you don't have to always rely on your gear. It's just a tool. It can help you achieve different results, but you can achieve 
anything with editing nowadays. Everything can be manipulated. AI is insane. So don't let the gear hold you back because you'll, you can get it with a kit lens and you can fake blur things out if you really want to. Now, last but not least, because this video is getting long, I might do a part two because I just, there's a lot of stuff, is if you don't enjoy the content you're producing, you shouldn't be doing it. Now, that's not to say that you don't, you shouldn't produce content if you're not pleased all the time. Everyone takes photos that they're not always pleased of or that there's room for improvement. We can all improve, even the best photographers in the world, there's room for improvements. But if you're just doing it just for money, you're not enjoying it, you're not, you shouldn't be doing it. I see that all the time as people nowadays because of social media, oh, I can be a photographer. It's kind of like, you know how everyone when they're younger usually wants to become like a detailer, at least most guys I feel like. When they hit 18, they're like, I'm gonna start my own detailing business. I feel like now it's transitioning into now everyone wants to be an automotive photographer because you can do it with a phone, you can do it with anything, it's cheaper. So you just really gotta kind of know, okay, well, are you doing it for the right reasons? Is money great? Yes. But then you're really going to build a reputation around yourself. And honestly, your work's probably going to suffer because you're not enjoying it. I can sit and edit for a, and one photo for three hours. If it's something I love, the person that's you know using it in their iPhone, that's just doing it for money, it's going to tap a preset, send it on its way. So yeah, guys, that's really kind of the main gist of it. I'm going to do a part two at a later date. I don't want to keep you guys bored, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, take everything I say with a grain of salt. But I promise you, if you listen to what I said and you absorb some of it, it will change your career path. You will grow faster, you will be more successful, and you're gonna make more money. So yeah, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. It helps it out a ton. It allows this video to get more publicity and it's gonna help change some of your guys' lives. I know that sounds crazy, but I promise it will. Again, if you guys have any questions, please hit me up. I'm gonna have my Instagram in the bio below. I'll probably pop it up on the screen too. I'm always available to chat. Just shoot me a message and I'll get back to you. But thank you guys so, so much. I enjoy doing these videos, it's so much fun. But nonetheless, I could ramble forever. Love you guys, peace out, and I'll catch you in the next video.